Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another video. Now, most people will know that this model here is Hornby's brand new Princess Royal class locomotive, released just this year. But did you know that this is merely the latest in a really long line of Hornby Princess Royal locomotives, the oldest of which dates back 70 years as of this year? Well, that's what I'm going to look into today for you. So the very first Hornby Princess locomotive was released in time for Christmas 1950 in a Marks and Spencers train set by a company named Rovex and it wouldn't be for a few years that the Rovex company changed their name to Triang Railways as I'm sure most of you will recognise and then later on to Hornby Railways. So the first loco looked a little bit like this one, now I'm showing you this one, the one in my hands uses the same body as the 1950s version however it does have a considerably different mechanism. The original the 1950 locomotive was terrible by modern standards. It had plastic wheels for a start uh, which did not pick up. The picking up was done by rollers which actually touched the track and they were incredibly unreliable to the point where the locos wouldn't run properly. The locos were also made of a plastic known as cellulose acetate which was a beautiful looking material. The models were nice and shiny and all the kids absolutely loved them but there was a major problem with them. Over time, and sometimes over not very much time, the material would warp and twist, and I've got an example of that here. Unfortunately, they made a poor choice of material for these. Here's a coach. I don't have a princess that's all warped and twisted, unfortunately, but apparently the original ones did. Yeah, as you can see, this toy is no longer usable because the roof especially has been terribly warped. Uh, the coach is warped as well. If I show you around it, you can see that all the windows are no longer straight. Yeah, it was a dodgy, dodgy material. So the original princess didn't run very well. It warped and twisted over time. And of course, by modern standards, it was an incredibly basic model. But they sold incredibly well. The train set sold out, in fact, quite quickly at Marks and Spencers. Why was that? Well, the main thing was that for the first time ever, this was a model train that was affordable. Children could afford to buy this with pocket money. Parents could afford to pick them up for their kids for Christmas. Why was that? Well, the fact is that they were made of plastic and not metal, and that at the time was absolutely revolutionary. All of the model trains up until that point had been made of metal. The Hornby Double ones were heavy metal, really good quality, everybody loved them, but of course they weren't affordable. So despite all of its problems, Problems, the original Rovex Princess was a major hit and of course that paved the way to all of the model trains that we have today from Hornby. So the Princess evolved over time, you can see the one I have here was updated slightly, mine does have metal wheels now. The motor used in the Marks and Spencers train set would evolve to become the X04 motor which as we know was really really successful. Indeed my Princess here does have the X04 motor but as you can see as I was saying yes, it does have the metal wheels, they adapted them so that they picked up through the the wheels rather than through those awful rollers so for the first time the performance was really really good. They also made quite a few enhancements to the model they produced a few different colors this is the maroon one as you can see and they even added some valve gear as you can see it's very rudimentary but they did get valve gear you can see if you look really closely this version also has spoked wheels where the previous version had just disc wheels with no proper spokes they were improving all of the time and I've got another one I might as well show you this one. As you can see it uses the same body it's just been adapted to have a different mechanism as you can see and this one also has the valve gear and they produced these models for a really long time I think the last time the early the original princess was produced I believe was in 1974 if you know of any later batches please do let me know but I believe the last was in 1974 after that the original princess was said goodbye to However, come the 1980s, the Princess would return to the range with a brand new tooling. This is the only of the four versions I'm going to be covering today that I do not own, but I'm going to talk to you about it anyway. So if I find a photo for you, hopefully I can, you can see that this model looks quite a bit different. The proportions are a lot better, it's longer, it's more like the actual size of the Princess to scale. It also has quite a lot more detail, you can see actual rivets on it, and it has separately fitted parts, separately fitted handrails, it has separately fitted reversing rods for the first time we were starting to see some detail. 
Now, in my opinion, a slight downgrade to the new 1984 design was the fact that these were no longer loco-driven. The motor was moved into the tender. These were early tender drive locomotives, although not that early come the 1980s, I guess. Now, these days we don't like tender drive. We prefer locos to be loco-driven where possible. Tender-driven locos tend to have problems. They tend to have traction tires, which aren't that great. If you want to know why I don't like traction tires, you can check that out. But in those days, people loved them, and of course, they were really, really powerful. So so 1984 was a bit of a LMS year for Hornby. They produced the 4P tank in that year as well, which I reviewed just recently. And I think they also introduced their first Black 5 model, which was the old tender-driven one. I still produced today to some extent with those railroad Black 5s, of course. So that model was really, really successful. The extra detail carried it forward many, many years, and they were produced until 2001, 2002, around that time. So quite a long time. The first one was produced for 25 odd years. The second newer version was produced for a similar amount of time. In 2003, I believe it was, we saw the next brand new princess model and it looks like this I do actually have one of these you'll be pleased to know but it's a bit more fragile okay here it is the tender's not quite connected so it's not entirely clear whether this was an all new tooled version of the princess the reason I say that is because the 4p that was released at the same time the 1980s 4p that was re-released around the same time but it wasn't all retooled it was updated and revamped very slightly now because I don't have the previous version of the princess model to this I don't know whether that is the case or not. It could well have been an all new retool, this 2003 version, or it could have just been improved and adapted and whatnot just to fit modern standards. One thing that is for sure though is that the chassis was altered quite dramatically. This version is no longer tender driven. The tender is just uh, you know, a free rolling tender. It does have pickups in it for the first time. Yes, in 2003, for the first time, the motors were moved back inside the locos and these were amazing. These were completely revolutionary. Just just like the 1950 locomotive was, just like the 1980s version was in terms of detail. This was revolutionary, in my opinion, due to the mechanics of the thing. So five pole skew wound motors, absolutely amazing. It had all wheel pickup on the locomotive, all wheel pickup on the tender, except the bogey and truck wheels, of course, on the loco. It had proper bearings in the wheel set, a really, really good quality mechanism. It also was quite unprecedented in terms of its detail as well. We had sprung buffers added to these, which is really, really cool. Loads of separately fitted parts. Some of the handrails, well, most of the handrails, in fact, were separately fitted. The decoration for the first time was super, super modern. Even if this did borrow some parts of the 1980s version, you can tell that the decoration looks way, way better. The printing on the Princess Elizabeth nameplate there, the lining on the boiler was just astonishing. And they made the models look even better with different versions by weathering them. This one is Lady Patricia, and you can see that this one has been weathered, and that makes it look a little bit more realistic. Even by today's standards, that 2003 Princess release looks and runs just amazing. Which makes the next part of the story quite interesting and surprising in a way, because here we are in 2020, less than 20 years on from that 2003 release, and Hornby announces a brand new Princess. It wasn't in 2020 they announced it, of course. And they released it, and that is less than 20 years. That is the shortest turnaround period for any of the Princess retools that we saw over the years. And here we are in 2020, and this is the result. Now, in my opinion, this model is just absolutely exquisite. It pulls together everything that Hornby have learned through all of those years, everything they've learned with regards to mechanism, with regards to details. Of course, this one has the firebox glow, which is a Hornby feature from many, many years gone by. The level of detail is just astonishing. You can see all of the riveting on the running plate there, which is not present on any of the other versions. We have sprung buffers, separately fitted parts, all the lank brackets this time, the smoke box dart are all separately fitted. We have a fully painted cab that had never been seen before on a Princess Royal, absolutely wonderful. Mechanically, they were upgraded as well. This has a flywheel for the first time. The tender is fully wired up to the loco permanently so that we've got an even better connection there. The valve gear, the running gear, all of that is really nice and fine and realistic. The axles are all covered up now so that the wheels look more realistic than they ever have done before. And some of the tiny details are just amazing, as you can see there. Yeah, this is the ultimate princess. 
And that, for the time being, is the end of the story. These are being produced right now, of course, the latest version in all sorts of different guises. We've got the LMS Maroon Crimson Lake here, if you want to call it that. We've got BR Blue versions. They're even producing a mock-up of the original 1950 train set for their 100-year centenary celebrations. I'm sure you've seen those on the website. And the princess that's going to be in there, the same sort of thing as, as this, is the sort of great, great, great granddad to the model that was released back in the 1950s. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. To me, it's really, really interesting just to look back over all these years and uh, find out how the various princess models have changed over that time. Absolutely fascinating. So I have three of the four versions. Obviously, the only one I don't have is the tender-driven version. So I thought, why not get these running and we'll give them a little go, see how they sort of compare to each other when performance is concerned. So let's do that. So there you have it then, 70 years of the Hornby Princess ready to run for you. Now, to be absolutely clear, the Triang one I've selected here is not the original 1950 release, far from it. In fact, I think this is a rerun from the 1970s. It's got a slightly better chassis, same motor, same everything really. It's just got slightly finer wheels, which run a little bit better. One thing you might find quite interesting though are the coaches that this loco is hauling. I don't tend to run Triang coaches because the wheels don't really agree with modern track due to the size of their flanges, but I've set some up here as you can see. The first one is a really early one. In fact, looking at the plastic, I would guess that that is a cellulose acetate one. Very fortunately, it hasn't warped for whatever reason, but as you can tell, that is a really, really early one. Goodness only knows what it's supposed to be, probably a Mark 1 or something like that. The next coach is a slightly newer one. It's still very, very old fashioned with the old couplings and everything, but it has obviously got a little bit more detail to it and a bit more accuracy. It does still have, if you look at the bogies, you can see the axles poking through. Uh, that is the old fashioned style. Most bogies which have wheels like that in them do not agree very well with modern track. The next coach behind it is the same thing, as you can tell, it has the same body. The colours are a little bit better though, perhaps a little bit more realistic, and you can see that the bogies have now been changed to have the more modern sort of pinpoint axles. And that coach in particular actually runs fine on modern track, which is pretty good. Um, when I get this one running, you're going to see the coaches bouncing and jumping all over the place because they really don't like modern track. But uh, I thought I'd do it anyway, we'll see if we get any derailments. So here we go with the trying one, this does run on the X04 motor, as I've said although it is, I believe, a 1970s release. Same body though, and as you can see, the drag from those coaches is pretty immense. <laughs> then we have the 2003 Princess, here we go. As you can tell, much, much, much quieter. And then we have, once those coaches have gotten out of the way, we have the 2020 Hornby Railways Ultra Modern Princess. There we go. And what a beauty that one is. Amazingly, it's very unusual to find any trying loco that's completely beyond help. A lot of them do still run absolutely fine today, which is quite an achievement. I will be very surprised if in 70 or 50 years time, the models made today still run absolutely fine. I guess only time will tell on that one. But there we are. I hope you found that really, really interesting. It does raise questions for the future though, doesn't it? In another 20 years time, are we going to see another princess from Hornby? If that's true, what will it look like? Will it have a motor inside? Will we be using motors in those days? Will it be live steam? Will motors be seen as a really old, outdated feature? Will they be all metal in those days? Will plastic be seen as a cheap, nasty feature of the past? Will model railways still be a thing? Will it have died out entirely? I'd love to know the answer to some of these questions. But it is amazing to see how things develop over time. I've always really enjoyed that aspect of the hobby and I hope you have as well. So thank you very, very much for watching. Do let me know down in the comments what you thought about that. Which princess is your favorite? Uh, let me know. Everybody might not just choose the ultra modern one because I'm sure lots of people do have very fond memories of those old trying ones. But let me know which your favorite was of the three that I've got. And I'll throw in the 80s tender driven one as well for you if you're uh, particularly fond of that one. For now though, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers everybody.